So there's been a noise update, and you can see I'm channeling my inner Patrick 4D here. I've got an evil jelly sandwich or something. So I have the bread selected, and if you, again, I'll keep saying this every video. If you want to know more about surface noise, go to my YouTube channel, type in surface noise, I guess, and there will be videos on surface noise you can check out and get caught up. Just to get to the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be talking about, down here under surface noise, go in here to edit, go to noise plug, turn that on. And when you're in here, you'll see a new option called max on noise. And there's a ton of noise options in here. Of course, Cinema 4D is famous for all of its cool noises that they have. You now have access to them in ZBrush. So now that we know that, that's the update. Let's talk about how noise, how noise plug specifically works with regular ZBrush noise uh, in ZBrush. So let's cancel out of that. Uh, let's, you know, we'll choose this jelly to start with now. I'm going to go to surface noise. And if you turn on surface noise for any object, you'll get a new window in here. You can't edit anything out here. It's all taking place in this window. You can recenter, frame, zoom, and move, or just use ZBrush navigation in here. And if we look at the object, you see it's fairly low res. And we're in the noise maker, basically, the uh, noise maker plugin. So by default, this is plain Jane Rocky noise. So if we go in here and we change the strength, you can see it, it gives us like a really, I don't know, like just a very noisy surface because, you know, it's noise, right? So we're going to go up here to noise scale. There's three types of noise that we can play with in here. Number one is this default noise. So this is just a default noise that is controlled. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that strength down a little bit. So it gives us a rocky appearance and it's totally controlled by this, what would this be called? A, a curve down here. So you can go in and you can add points in here by clicking on the curve and then you can move these points around. You can change the focal shift on these. You can drag a curve off and then back on and that will turn it from a like a Bezier curve to a sharp curve. So with all of these, you can go through and make all sorts of cool, crazy, rocky looking noises. That's the default ZBrush noise. Uh, if you like it, you can hit OK. It'll apply that noise to your mesh. Now, you can turn noise off and then you can turn it back on. It's basically just a displacement texture. It's not actual geometry. If I go through here and I take my geometry and move it, you'll see as I'm moving the geometry, oops, as I'm moving the geometry, the noise kind of swims through the mesh. Um, that's just, again, it's like a projection of a noise onto your mesh. It doesn't really exist. If I want it to really exist in the sense that it's actually displacing my geometry, sorry, let me just move this back in place, um, I can say surface noise apply to mesh. Now you're going to see this object was so low res, it kind of applied it, but there's not much there. So let's undo that. Let's give myself some more geometry to display. So I'm going to turn off noise temporarily. Uh, I'm going to hit control D on my keyboard, which is hitting this divide button a bunch of times. And your poly count will probably be up here. Mine's up here. Uh, I'm going to subdivide this up to like 1.3 million. And now if I go turn on noise, it looks the same. However, if I go in here and say apply to mesh, now when it applies to mesh, this is real geometry. I can go in and smooth it. But, and, and I can also turn on the noise again. It'll kind of add an additional noise on top of the displaced geometry it just did. But essentially we now have real displaced geometry. There are safeguards you can put in. So if we undo back to where we have just our plain object with surface noise displacement, we can go in here, for example, and say store morph target. We can go up here to layers and we can say uh, make a new layer. So while it's recording, I can turn on surface noise and I can say apply to mesh or I can even say mask by noise. And then I can go down here to deformation inflate and I can inflate or deflate through that noise. So whichever one I want to do, we'll go ahead and do what we're doing. If I'm happy with this, I can control drag to unmask. I can turn off record. And now I have a little bit of layer functionality. So I can go through here and I can make it a little more subtle or I can even invert the noise if I want. And I can even go down here to this lower slider and I can under crank it or I can over crank my noise, whatever effect you want. If you're happy with this, you can say bake all. And now that layer's gone. And again, this is just geometry that you can go sculpt on. Now, because we did store a morph target, uh, we can hit B to bring up our brush menu, M to narrow down to the brushes that start with M, and then G, morph brush, BMG, that'll bring in the morph brush. And basically, when we stored the morph target, it had it was just a smooth object, right? We hadn't applied the noise yet. We can morph back to that state. So you can kind of clean this up a little bit if you want. 
or you can go in here and hit switch and that'll switch it back to the clean default state where we store the morph target. And then you can use a morph brush to brush in where you want that noisy stuff. So basic noise functionality. Don't even bother watching those other videos. Now you're all cut up. Now going back in here to surface noise and let's also delete our morph target. We don't need it. That's basic noise. There are two others. If we go in here to edit, we're back in our noise maker. You can go in here to alpha and you can bring in Let's go in here, my Z alphas. I think I got some of these from Pablo Munoz Gomez, some Tileable Cloth alphas. So I think these will be good. I'll just bring in this woven pattern here. So now instead of just noise scale, we now have alpha scale. So, but one thing you're gonna notice is as I'm doing this alpha scale, I still have rocky noise here. That's because I have mixed basic noise on by default. So turn mixed basic noise down to zero. And now we just have alpha scale and that strength will only affect our alpha. So here, again, we're scaling our alpha, we're changing our strength, and now this alpha here is being applied to our mesh. Granted, if I go to the side, it skews. That's because it's a planar projection of this alpha. So if you really want to do this, you would go through and you would UV your low res, and then you would use this UV option. I'm not going to bother doing that right now. I'm going to go ahead and just turn this alpha off by clicking that alpha button. That will turn my regular noise back on. One more way I can change noise is again, going in here to noise plug like we started with. And in here, we now have max on noise. I'm gonna start with something cool. I'm gonna grab stupel, hit okay. And again, I want uh, mixed basic noise down to zero and then I wanna change my strength. I can see it's starting to deform my mesh and then I'm gonna go in here and instead of noise scale or alpha scale, I'm gonna choose plug and scale. And now I can start seeing what this noise is doing to, to my mesh. So again, we'll, oh, another thing too, is you can turn this relative on or off. If you need to get a little more oomph to your noise, you can, you can turn that button on and off and uh, whichever one suits you better, you can use that one. If we want to change our noise out now, we'll go back into noise plug, edit, and we'll go look through these options here. So again, uh, we'll go poxo, we'll go electric. So go through here and gaseous, <laughs> go through here and tr wavy turbulence. There we go. Uh, while you're doing this, you can also go in here to scale. You can scale it within this window to give you a very broad scale. Uh, you can also go in here and type in values. You can do X, Y, and Z scale, angle and offsets. Interactive update is on so you can see it update in the window as you go. So have a fun time with these. Uh, I think we'll end up with like Booyah. We'll hit OK. We'll go through here and we'll change our plugin scale. And if we reset our plugin curve, you're gonna notice that our pl noise plug here is being affected by our curve. So if you want to modify, for example, if I hit reset, this is, again, booyah. And if I make this smaller, you can see this is the result I'm getting and I can change, again, that plug and scale here and also uh, the strength of that. I can modify this by going in here and playing around with these settings as well. So I can go through and I can increase or decrease the effect uh, of that object here. And of course, you know, play around the scale. So between mixing regular noise scale, uh, going in here and playing with these curves, and again, you can add more points and go in here and affect your, no your noise and update them like that. Uh, you can get some really, really cool effects and then hit okay, and you, it'll be applied to your mesh as a texture. So feel free to play with these options. And again, underneath surface noise, edit, noise plug, edit, go in here, Choose a max on noise that's totally cool. Maybe cranal. That looks cool to me. We'll hit reset on this. This is the result we're getting. Change the overall strength. Change this curve to get the uh, kind of result you want. And again, you can add or delete points. Uh, to delete points, you just drag them off. And then you can add a point and then again, drag off and drag back on to make it sharp. Drag off and drag back on to make it bendy. Change your focal shift. Drag it off to get rid of it. Hit reset. You can flip horizontal. You can flip vertical, undo, all of that stuff you have available to you. But again, a lot of really cool noises you can play with now in ZBrush 2024.